Sometimes a portrait looks like a person it's supposed to represent. For example, this looks exactly like Dwight D. Eisenhower. And other times the portrait symbolizes the person. It represents who they are, what their qualities are, without looking like their face. For example, this might be a portrait of a very lonely person, while this portrait might be of Martin Luther King. Every character has character traits. Your job is to identify those traits, think of something else, usually an animal or an object, that also has those traits. Then your portrait of the character becomes an image of the animal or object instead of the original character. This video will guide you through the art steps you'll use after you've identified your character, their traits, the symbol you want to use, and text from the book that supports the character trait you've identified. The first thing we'll make is a watercolor background with a vignette. Vignette is a French term referring to a blurred or darkened edge. Once you know what to look for, you'll see vignette frames are everywhere. They're a common practice in art to draw your eye towards the center of the image. So for this part of the project, we'll need watercolor paints, watercolor paper, paper towels, some fresh water, and a brush. I'm going to make two different backgrounds so I can choose the one that looks best with my final project. If you have time and materials, you might make two, three, or more backgrounds. I want the colors in my project to not look like they came directly from the tray. I want custom colors like professional artists create. For the first background, I'm going to make a set of warm colors, mixing some red, yellow, and orange and browns. The browns will be the darkest, so I'll save them for the vignette. Pause the video now to prepare the set of paints that you'd like to paint with. Since I don't want to see the brush strokes, I'm going to use really wet paper. That will blur my brush marks so that all we get is a wash of color. You'll notice I'm starting with the lightest colors here in the middle, my light yellow brown color that I mixed, and then progressing towards the darker colors near the edge, going now to an orange. Hopefully it's obvious that this part of the video has been greatly speeded up. You should work much slower. I certainly do. I'm trying to make sure that the colors blend from one to the other. I don't really want to see brush strokes or a line when I've changed from one color to the next. And finally a brown to get the darkest edge. Notice how I'm using paper towel every once in a while to either create a texture or to lift off water. As I said, I'll be preparing two backgrounds, one with warm colors and one with cool colors. This one with the blues uh, might provide a different feeling or a different symbolism to my portrait, and I like to have options to choose from when we reach that stage in the project. Notice how I'm not using the colors directly out of the tray, but mixing them on a plate instead. You might notice a uh, blue and green being mixed, or even orange and blue being mixed to create sort of a brownish blue. And here are my two final uh, background colors. Pause the video now and prepare your backgrounds. For the transparency part of the project, you'll need a transparency, a fine point marker, and a printout of the symbol or a drawing that you've made of the symbol that you've chosen. I chose a penguin because the character in my book is very protective, just like a penguin is when sitting on its egg. Final project will have my symbol on one side and my text evidence on the other side. If you want the text on the right, start by tracing the symbol on the right as well. This might sound confusing, but the transparency gets flipped over, so if you trace it on the right, it ends up on the left side. Think about how much space to leave for the text, and no, it's okay if your symbol isn't completely in the picture, but sort of coming in from the side. Next, I have to choose a color family for my image. Colors can be symbolic too. For example, some people associate yellow with happiness, red with power, and green with luck. There are many different interpretations of colors by culture, and the way you view a color might not be the same as someone else. One thing to remember is the color you choose can be symbolic, and it doesn't have to be realistic. 
If I want a purple penguin for a symbolic reason, that's great. In my project, I'm going to choose blue for loyalty, even though penguins are obviously not blue. Neutral colors, black, white, and gray are also good additions to your project. Trace your symbol with a permanent marker. Hold the permanent marker upright and not at an angle, which would work for a pencil, but not for these markers. Trace all the small details that might be useful. If there's some sort of a value change, you can trace it in with a pen. Again, I'm speeding up this part of the video because tracing is time consuming. Take your time and be careful. This shows a good amount of detail and this would not be enough. Pause the video now to do your tracing. We are going to use transparency material to apply oil pastel, but it's important to scratch the surface with sandpaper to get the oil pastel to stick. You can see here that when I try to apply the oil pastel to the unscratched surface, it, it doesn't look the same and it actually will wipe off with a damp cloth quite easily, while on the scratched area it's much harder to remove the oil pastel. When sanding, be careful to stay within the boundaries of your drawing. I like to use little circular motions when I'm sanding. You might have to fold the sandpaper to get into the small areas like I am here on the wing of my penguin. Here the circular motion doesn't work as well as a back and forth motion. Turn your transparency as needed to make it convenient for you to do the sanding. Look for areas that are not as well sanded. They'll appear more transparent and go back and sand those so that it's evenly sanded all the way across your subject. Pause now to sand inside your symbol. I'm going to place my image back over the original and choose my color family for my penguin. As you might remember, I chose the cool color family to represent loyalty. Having some black, gray, and white as neutral colors can help me explore value as well. Some of the dark areas that I made with a pen were sanded away, and I want to bring back those extra dark values now, so I'm using the pen over the sanded regions when I want to bring back an extra dark value. So now starting with the black oil pastel, I'm moving into the darkest areas of my uh, image, and I'm pressing onto the sanded area with the oil pastel, working my way around looking for where the darkest areas in the photograph are. By having the photograph right underneath, it's easy to look for the dark regions. Now I'm using dark blue next and smearing it right into the black. I saw a couple areas where a texture might be useful, so I'm putting those in. You can't put the pen on once the oil pastel is down. So if you're going to use pen, do it before any oil pastel is there. You can slide another piece of paper underneath to see how your image is progressing. I'm moving into a medium blue in this area. Again, just using the photograph underneath as a guide for where I should use dark values and light values. As I move into the light blue here, that's what I was seeing as a light gray in the background. This can be time consuming, and obviously this part of the video is greatly speeded up. I don't work this fast. Continue checking by putting another sheet of paper underneath seeing how things are coming along, and then removing the paper to see through to the photograph behind. You can also flip your page over because this is actually the side that is going to be viewed, not the side that has the oil pastel on it, but the transparency side or the glossy side. So flip it over frequently and, and see what the final image is going to look like, like that. Pause the video now to work on getting your colors in place. Here's another example. It's oil pastel on this side, and yet this is the side that would be viewed. I can 
compare different background colors to see which one looks best with my image. So the blue bird on a blue background sort of is camouflaged, while a blue bird on a warmer background like this one really stands out. If you have any smudges of oil pastel in a non-sanded area, they can be wiped off with a damp cloth really easily. This is a good time to do that. For my penguin, I'm going to decide between either a warm background or the cool background. Cool background looks good, but I think you prefer how it stands out against the warm background. There are two options for getting text into your artwork. One method is to write it lightly in pencil on the background and then go over it in pen when you have it looking right. The second option is to print out the text and then trace it onto the transparency. Position the text as you want it, center it well, and then tape it down. Take your time to trace every letter carefully. Here I am doing it at my regular speed, really trying to get every letter to look right. This takes time, so be patient, and you'll be rewarded with great looking words. Here it is, speed it up. I don't work nearly this fast. And here we are back at regular speed, showing how I take my time to make every letter carefully. Finally, decide how to hold your transparency onto the background. This can be as simple as some tape or something more elaborate like photo corners. Write up your artist statement explaining the decisions you made about symbolism, symbolic colors, those sorts of things, and display your artwork with pride. Visit artsintegration.net for more arts integration lessons.